Hey guys, it's Dima from Demostech, and today we are going to talk about super fast DNS. Now before you go straight and leave this video because you think I'm going to talk about the 1.1.1.1 Cloudflare's DNS and that's all and how to change to it, you are totally wrong. I'm going to talk about other DNS as well and also how you can determine what is really faster for you because Cloudflare DNS won't always be the fastest one for you. So before we actually continue, I want to talk a little in very short, what is a DNS? So when you open a website on your browser, your computer doesn't actually know what is, for example, demostech.net. In order for your computer to navigate to the website that you selected, it actually needs to know its IP address. Sort of like if you want to call your friend, you need to know his phone number. That's exactly what's going on here. Now, in order to call this website, there is something called DNS. Now, DNS is configured in the settings of your network configuration. It can be on your computer, it can be on your router, which also gives your computer the settings via DHCP. Now, what your computer actually does is asking that DNS server that is configured, who is demostech.net? And the DNS server will answer with the IP address and then your computer will know how to navigate to that website. Now, why are we talking about fast DNS? If, for example, you want to ask demostech.net and your DNS server that you receive usually from your ISP provider by default isn't really fast or currently is being used by many other people, it might take time to receive the answer. Now, your speed on how fast your computer can load the website won't be affected, but when you ask for that website, until your computer actually begins to load the website, that's the thing that will be affected and nowadays it's actually very important. So if you never changed your DNS or still using your ISP DNS, you definitely want to keep watching this video until the end. Now what I'm going to show in this video, nobody else actually shows it on YouTube, at least I never encountered anyone that actually showed this. So in the past, I was using Google's DNS 8.8.8.8 and 8.8.4.4. And it was really good for me, everything worked flawlessly, it was much faster than my ISP, worked a lot better and nothing is blocked, so everything is good. But about a month ago or so, Clother announced their own DNS, which is 1.1.1.1 and also 1.0.0.1 which they claim is the fastest DNS, it doesn't collect logs on you, which is obviously secure, and it has the potential to be actually the fastest DNS that there is today. Sounds great, right? Now I did what everyone probably also did. I went to my DNS settings and changed it to the new Cloudflare DNS and forgot about it. Everything works as well. I don't really see any speed difference because, come on, Google DNS is also very fast. But... If it's faster, so why not? Why not switch? That's exactly what I did. I did switch. But then I started thinking, how am I really sure that Cloudflare DNS is very fast? I mean, most of the YouTubers I watch are from Canada, United States, uh, Europe, and I live in Israel. Maybe for Israel, Cloudflare DNS doesn't work that fast. How do I actually determine which DNS is faster for me. And then I realized that, yeah, I might find some tools that can measure that, but I mean, we can do that on PowerShell. So let's go ahead and I'm going to show you a few tricks that you can do at your home to determine which DNS is actually the fastest for you. Now let's begin by the regular command NS lookup. Now, NS lookup allows you basically to do a DNS query to a specific DNS server that you want. You don't necessarily need to use your own DNS. You can query whatever DNS you like. So let's go ahead and do the following. Let's DNS query demo stack, but not from my own server. If I press enter right now, it will query the DNS that is configured for me and I believe currently I'm configured back to Google, and I'll soon explain you why. 
Let's go ahead and query the DNS 1.1.1, Cloudfirst DNS, and hit enter and see what happens. Now, as you can see, it cannot resolve demostech.net at all. But before you run to conclusion that this DNS isn't good or something, uh, I checked it on other computers and it actually works fine. And I'll show you in a moment that it works for me almost. Uh, for some reason, my ISP doesn't let me use that specific DNS. I have no idea why. I think I read somewhere that uh, some Cisco routers use by default that IP internally or something like that. And I believe that's what's going on on my ISP because for some reason I cannot reach that specific IP. Now, if I actually ping it, it works, but never mind. Now, let's do the same, but for 1.0.0.1 and hit enter. As you can see, very fast we did receive our IP and the DNS works perfectly. And you actually can see that it's 1.1.1 by Cloudflare DNS, which is very good. And it works. And if we'll do the same for Google's DNS, for example, as you can see, it's very fast as well. Now, come on, with those speeds, can you actually determine who is faster? I cannot. But PowerShell can. PowerShell has a specific command that is called measure command. And if we actually take the same command that we just did, let's take the, you know what, let's take the NS lookup of 1.0.0.1 and put it inside the measure command. And we will actually do this. We will, you know what, I'll show you what it gives and total and then we'll filter it out. If you press now enter, you'll see some interesting results. So you'll see that it took zero days, obviously, zero hours, obviously, zero minutes, obviously, zero seconds, which are already starting to be good. And it took only 287 milliseconds. Now, to be fair, let's take the total seconds and filter by that. So basically what we do is go again to that command. We do select, add the total seconds, and now it will give only the total seconds. As you can see, for some reason, currently it went slower than it was before. Now, the speed varies. I mean, if I'll run it again, you can see that now it's again faster. If I run it again, again slower. It always changes. But currently, I would say it's okay. For some reason, the first time that I actually tried that command with that specific DNS server, with, with Cloudflare's DNS server, I received something much higher than one second, which is totally unacceptable, especially if you do actually the same for Google. So let's go ahead and put Google here. It will give you, okay, you see, currently it's slower than Cloudflare's DNS, but if you'll run it again, already it's in a good shape. If you'll run it again, well, as you can see for right now, Cloudflare's DNS wins. And again, for that day that I tested it for the first time, Cloudflare DNS did not do very well at all, and that's why I actually changed back to Google's DNS. And to be honest, I do feel some changes. I do feel that my internet works much smoother than it was with Cloudflare DNS. That's why I really suggest and I really recommend that you actually test it yourself. Before you actually switch to Google's DNS or to Cloudflare's DNS, do the test. Now, in case that the speed difference isn't very high, I would suggest to stick with Cloudflare DNS. Now, as you probably know, Google loves to collect data. Obviously, whatever query you do with their DNS server, it's being logged, they know that it's you, they log your IPs, they log all other kind of stuff. You might not want that. And in that case, you can use Cloudflare DNS, which they claim that they don't do any logs or etc. But let's not stop here. There's another DNS called Quad DNS. So basically, if we'll go, you know what, let's go back to our original NS lookup and query 9quad DNS, which is 9.9.9.9. .9 As you can see, the results are very fast, but that's not why I'm showing this specific DNS. This specific DNS 
is very important and it does something a little bit different. So before it actually gives you the IP address of your requested website, it actually compares with some IBM servers and sort of a huge data collection that they have that the IP that you are getting back is not something malicious or bad or might include any virus. Basically, this DNS might protect you from bad things happening to you. Now, it might be slower and we'll test it right now. Let's go ahead and measure what we did before. Pretty much the same. And see if that one is actually fast enough or not. And as you can see, it returned us with total seconds 0.3, which is, you know what, better than both of them. So let's go ahead again, do that. Now, as you can see, uh, doing it only once isn't helpful enough. I would do it a few times in different times of the day. So for example, right now you see that it gave pretty much the same result as Google's DNS. And let's run it again. Great result. Again, pretty good result. Okay. Very bad result for some reason. Since we are querying a few times the same domain name, um, they might have some timeout that they provide us. It's possible. Let's do it again. And as you can see, result is pretty good. And for last time, result is very good. So as you can see, that DNS is fast enough. But before it actually gives you the IP again, it actually checks it in a huge database by IBM and gives you the result only if it's protected. If not, I think it gives you some error page or something like that that the site that you requested is actually malicious or something wrong with that. Now, that concludes on what is a DNS and why you should actually measure the speed of a DNS that you're trying to choose here because the fastest DNS for you might not be Cloudflare. Now, after you've done that, you need to actually change the DNS. So let me show you how you change your DNS on your computer. So what you want to do is go to your network icon, click on network and internet settings, change adapter options, and then you need to determine which is your real connection. Usually it will be Realtek or Intel here. Usually it's Ethernet or it might be something wireless in case you're using a laptop with wireless connection. Right click on it, choose properties and you might need to accept your USC settings. Select Internet Protocol version 4 and hit properties. And here, as you can see currently everything is on automatic. But here you can choose your DNS. So if we'll enter something like 9.1.9 and click OK, our DNS will be changed in no time. And then we can start using that DNS instead of the one that is being provided by our DHCP, by our router or whatsoever. Now, again, uh, if you know how, I would suggest that you go to your router and do the change there and not on your computer. Because if you do that on your computer and you have multiple computers or devices at your house, you'll have to do it on every one of them. If you do it on the router, the next time that any of the computers or any of the devices that you have will receive a new IP and all the rest of the settings, it will receive the same DNS that you chose on the router. Now, I'm not going to show you how to change that on your router since it's different for each and every router that might be. Thank you for watching this Demostech episode. If you enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button hit the bell so you won't miss any future video. And I'll see you on the next one.